Hey guys, welcome to part three. Hopefully I can get them done today and uh, get some riding in. I'm recycling these old connectors from the the other one. That's why I crimped them. Now I can solder them. Um, these 6S uh, balance leads, I basically recycled them as well. Um, 8S are hard to find, so what I did is I basically uh, sanded off the tab on the end, got it as close to the pin as I could, then I cut another one, sanded it down with the sand paper, and basically just stuck it into the hole, like I got this one here, and then what I do is I put a little bit of glue around the, um, the wire, holds it together, and let it sit overnight, so that's one 8S balance lead, this one here is ready to go, Pull it out, make sure it goes back in, and you can tailor it. Like if it uh, is a little tight, you can give it a little bit of sandpaper and try it again. That's pretty good. So what you do then is I just grab some goop and let it set. on in here. Doing this also helps, like I said, with um, not yanking the wires out of the plug, which, if you've uh, ever done that, it's kind of irritating trying to get the wire back in. Gives a little bit of support over time, longevity of the uh, plug. There. We'll let that dry, and that'll be our other six uh, eight S plug. Okay, so there's a couple of things I went over on the bike yesterday that I wanted to discuss. One is when these bags are fully opened, they come up to about here. And they're a little too tall to run the leads out the bag. Um, it'd be a bit of a pain in the butt, actually. Because you'd have to make the lead so bloody long. I'd have to... I'd have to extend the um, the balance leads double that size, which I don't want. I basically just want to put those on the battery and just run them out the side. So what I think we're going to do is I'm going to drill a hole on the side here on the plastic and run the uh, battery leads and the um, balance leads out the side. That way they're low in the bag, and you know I don't have to extend them at all. Save time. So well, basically, they should be long enough. Yeah, should be long enough. So we're going to find out. And uh, if I drill a hole through the back of the plastic, it uh, might give a little bit more support uh, from ripping the bag. I still got to figure out how to move those uh, clips, so I'm going to have to do that too. I'm thinking. So they have rivets, and I don't have rivets to replace it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it on. I'm going to set it on a hard surface and uh, try hitting it with a punch and see if I can't unfold that rivet and pop it out. That way I can save the rivet and uh, reuse it. Hopefully, as you can see. The rivet there, it's got to be moved. But like I said, if I put it on a hard surface and hit it with a punch, I should be able to fold it in and push it through. We'll see. Well, it worked. Uh, I ended up using <laughs> a uh, butterfly drill bit and uh, popped it right through. Like I said, it's going to leave little holes there, but you can fill those up with goop if you want to keep it watertight. And uh, doesn't look like it's going to rip or anything, so we're good. 
I got to save the rivets. Uh, I'm going to try and reuse them. See how that goes. I don't have any in hand. I'll try and round off the end or flatten it out so I can just push it in and then, and then um, mushroom it. But uh, that worked. So we're going to move it and put it probably right about there. Should be more than enough. But I'll measure them out anyway. Okay, well those bottom brackets are moved. Um, that was not fun. There was no point in making a video of it. Um, basically, it was be it was like uh, working on a pair of hockey skates. Um, if uh, if you've ever worked in a sports store and replaced a tuck on a hockey skate, you have the rivets. Basically, I basically punched the rivets out and then rounded them back up so they're nice and smooth with the um, pliers. And I drilled the holes, put the rivet back in, and then you need a backing to keep the rivet from popping back out when you try and slam the, um, the washer back on. So I used a socket, set it in the hole like that, put it on the floor, on the cement floor, and then what I did is I spread the pliers like that, put the washer on, on the, uh, lined it up with the, um, the rivet, pushed and hammered the rivet, or the washer around the rivet until the rivet was uh, sticking out further than the washer, and then I hammered the washer, and it worked. So I've got some glue on the holes now. Just waiting for that to cure a bit so I can move them around. But uh, they they now fit. And uh, they're as good as factory. So they're tight. So we'll see how that works. Uh, next is the wiring of the batteries. And then we got to find a place to uh, drill a hole and open it up so we can run the, um, the uh, wires and the uh, balance leads out of the bag. Uh, somewhere on the back of plastic in and out of the way so when you look at the bike it just basically looks like two panner bags you wouldn't know there were batteries in it so uh, we'll get to the next step okay so i set one in the put the leads on it and set one in the bag just so i get a, an idea of uh, how well it's going to fit and uh, it fits pretty good it doesn't move around either because of that uh, sled i put on the bottom uh, as you can see, my leads only go to about there. So every time I want to charge the battery, I basically would have to open it and then let the charger dangle inside the bag, which or extend those wires, which I don't want because then I got double the wires floating around the bag. Eventually, one of them's going to get damaged and you know it's going to short. So for me, it'd be easier just to set a spot to set the balance leads out so they can dangle out of the bag. But you don't want to get them too close to here because you'll pull on them. Thinking over here, out of the way, I can always move these hooks a little inwards if I wanted to. Or even down here. Um, it won't really matter. It's gonna, also, i got to make sure it's not in the way where it's going to be slamming against one of those poles. Actually, what I should do... So let me set this on the bike. And then I'll get a better idea of what, uh, what I'm doing here. And notice the orientation of the battery. It's still pretty flat. It's not leaning over too much. I'm still going to put a little bit of goop on the uh, inside between the plastic and the battery and actually glue the battery right to the plate. Which, uh, I don't know if I should do that or not. It might help a little bit with the rigidity uh, of it. Uh, okay, so here's what we got to work with. You can put it up in this corner here, and that would give us about two or three inches hanging out of the bag right here for the uh, main leads and the uh, balance lead. Or we could go here, which would be lower. Uh, I don't know if the lower is better. There's not much of a difference there between the top corner and the. Well, we could go here. Even if we move the bag over, we got until we hit this bar here, so I'm just going to take a pen and mark it, because I'll be doing the same with the other one. Unfortunately, you have to do a custom like this if you want it to turn out. And uh, I, I'll probably be doing more, uh, more mods to it down the road. There we go, I marked it. So we'll drill a big-ass hole in it. 
and then we'll start running our leads out and give it a test. Okay, so here we go, guys. Uh, obviously, it's a little short. It's still it's not as long as I wanted, and it's not really holding together too well. I'll get a few charges out of it. Uh, you know, it's like trying to order this stuff through uh, Amazon or anywhere else lately. Uh, 8S balance leads are hard to get a hold of. So if this can get me through until until I can get the um, the leads, I'll be happy with that. Uh, I'm just putting the connector on now, so I can balance this one out as I'm starting the other one. But this one's pretty much done. It's ready to go. Like I said, I'll leave this out, and this will plug into the wiring harness that'll be on the bike. And then I unplug it, and then lift it off. And that's basically what I wanted all along, so... We're just going to carefully put these connectors on without shorting it. It's only 24 volts, but there's a hell of a lot of amps. <laughs> if these fuse together, it could be bad. Uh, solder. What the hell did I do with my solder? Yeah, so this basically turned out exactly how I envisioned it. So basically, I like to go over what I'm doing before I actually do it. That way I know it'll turn out. Um, I might run into a few problems. Like down the road I might find out that those latches are flimsy as well hell. And uh, they'll start breaking and everything else. If that happens, then I'll just try a different brand of bag. It's not a big deal. I just want to recommend these bags. I went, I, I bought them because they say Rhino bags. So you figure it's they're pretty much tough, right? But they're made in China, so you never know. Not that I'm knocking China. It's just some products that come out of that place are just pretty bad. Okay, we got that all buttered up. Let's remember which one is positive. Would that be the square one? Yeah, make sure when you start doing this, make sure you got that sleeve on. It's going to hold. To do this properly, you should be able to just slide it right in the slot. Let it cool a bit. This one is a little long. I'm going to try cutting it. Uh, I think to finish this off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little extra of that plexi because it's very light. And I'm going to make a lid to go over top. Like these lids are pretty much, they're done. Like three years old. They've been falling apart for years. Uh, I'm going to make a lid to go over top of the battery to finish it off. This way, if I actually do have to use the battery or the bag to haul something, um, would it be a shirt or whatever, I can basically just throw it in there and not worry about it to... Uh, monkeying with the battery. The battery is protected or whatever I throw in there because I likely will do that because they are panners, right? So you want to use them more than just for the battery. Need more solder on that. Well, hopefully you guys are doing well. I know it's a, a big change not being able to go to work or go to school or whatnot. Hopefully this pandemic doesn't last. This is actually my second pandemic. That's how old I am. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much the same. 
It's a weird feeling knowing that there's so many people dying around the world. But uh, I've been through this once already. Uh, the one in the 70s, the, the Asian flu. And I actually got it. And uh, I was as sick as a dog. That's the only reason I remember it. And I mean, I was really sick. I was so sick I couldn't even get out of bed. And when I did, I had to crawl. I was just a kid. But I survived it. I don't... <laughs> I don't remember... Oh, man. See, that's what I told you, the amps. Oh, well. Got a little bit of brown finger there. There you go. A little highlight of this video. Just going to put it against my stomach here to solder it up before I short it again. There we go. There. See? I did it so you don't have to. <laughs> well, lucky I didn't damage it to the point where I had to replace the whole socket. It's good. Solid. And then you slip your sleeve over it. And that's all you should have to do. So wait. A little exposed on the positive, but it'll be, it's good. That's it, guys. Uh, basically, do the same to the other one, and uh, hopefully I can get a ride in. See how they work out. I know they're going to work out pretty good. Like I was saying, if these batteries, these bags go bad, um, one thing I'm going to do with the first couple of rides is I'm going to put a strap around this one here and right onto the, um, the bike. That way, if uh, these do fail, uh, it'll, it'll at least hang off the bike. It's not going to hit the road and someone's going to run it over and start a fire and everything else. That's my biggest fear, is uh, the way the size of these batteries, they're not big enough, they're <laughs> small enough where they will actually pass underneath a the vehicle. They'll actually get jammed underneath the vehicle, and um, that would be bad. So, uh, we'll see how that works. Nice. They all came up. 43, 40, uh, 43, 43, 60, 43, 36. Some of them are pretty low. So it's going to take some balancing to get these back up and running. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this because I knew that, I knew that, um, that BMS wasn't doing a proper job. So, and uh, like the one at 336, that one there could have could have been bad. I could have, uh, on a long ride, dropped that one to uh, two volts or below, which would have killed it. So, But anyway, it's working. The lead's going to get me through until I can get new leads. Um, I would have had a new ISDT uh, charger by now, but uh, apparently on Amazon they're running low on them. And the ones that are our uh, Q8 or 8S are, the prices are way jacked up, way too high. Like this one here I paid 69 bucks for. They got ones there for two hundred dollars. Like what a joke! So I'm not going to be picking that up. This is not worth two hundred bucks. It's worth I'd pay maybe eighty, ninety dollars at tops. But I'm not spending that much. Anyway, it is working. Uh, so basically, this times two. I do do the other one. Um, the bag is pretty robust when it comes to drilling a hole through it. You don't have to worry about it ripping. Um, it's got a rubber seal on it as well. I mean, it's not very watertight. If I wanted to, I could uh, put some goop around it, uh, which would work, which I probably will do it down the road. But I'm going to be replacing the lead anyway, so I'm going to leave it dry for now. So that's about it, guys. You got yourself um, a battery bag. And uh, the next video I post, I guess we'll post a video of uh, testing it. These cells have never had it so good. And there was an issue with one of the balance leads not making a proper connection on the battery because I didn't uh, I didn't solder the leads on the end, and it, uh, the one cell was coming up four volts, and then it would actually shut down and go into error mode, which is nice. But see that that is nicely balanced, way better than the BMS. Hey yeah, guys, okay, so it is finished. I have been actually asked, added the booster pack. I'm going to figure out a different place for it. But as you can see, they're all properly terminated on both sides like that. Exactly. Uh, so basically, you just unplug it like that. And pull the bag off. It's 
basically what I wanted. Nice terminated plugs that uh, aren't going to arc and spark. Hook carry the amps. And uh, this now frees up my um, my deck so I can pick stuff up and not worry about uh, making room for a battery. And the weight is uh, more distributed on the back. Um, like I said, I'm going to see if I can find maybe a little maybe a little fanny pack or something that goes in the frame that will actually hold the little battery in and then I'll wire it up that way. I don't want to add another battery into this pack bouncing around in there. I just want it for these cells only. But uh, that's it for now. The worst of the wiring is done, as you can see. This basically crosses over and then they're um, in series. There it goes.